us, and we pray that uh, uh, God's word will be a blessing to you, that you'll be able to feed on it and enjoy the things of God and how God speaks to you concerning the betterment of your life. I want to ask that you continue to pray for uh, Sister Shirley Solomon. There is a young baby in the hospital that she's asking for prayer on, uh, uh, Giovanni White. And he uh, is in the hospital, uh, his brother and his wife. Let me read this again. The baby of our family friend is in need of our prayers, Giovanni White. He is back in the hospital, and plus his brother and his wife is in the hospital too. Uh, Sister Shirley Solomon also expresses prayer for her brother, who is in CCU, um, who he had, he had a stroke. So Sister Shirley Solomon's brother had a stroke, and he has COVID. Uh, his wife, as well, is in ICU, and she also has COVID. So let's add them to the prayer list. That's the brother and sister-in-law of uh, brother, uh, Sister Shirley Solomon. And then she's asking prayer for the baby who is also in the hospital, back in the hospital actually, and having uh, various problems with its, its young health and young life. So church, keep in mind all of those who have suffer the passing of a loved one due to this COVID virus and many other sicknesses that are going on. Let us continue to pray for each and every one. I would ask that you add, uh, add uh, Coach Ronald Booker to your prayer list. Um, he will, this weekend, funeralize his daughter, Monica Booker. And so, uh, church, we just, it's just so much going on, so much uh, happening and taking place and I'm doing a study and a class that I'm taking now on spiritual warfare and one of the things that have become apparent is that we be, we we go through life sometimes um, as if we, we get low to sleep and sometimes we think that everything because everything is the way it is that it's, that, that I have no issues or, or things are going on in our life that we often ask, why do these things happen to us? Why do these, these bad things happen to good people? And we often ask ourselves, even as children of God, one of the things though we have failed to keep in mind is that these things sometimes, many times, oftentimes, what we are seeing happening in our society, in our country, in our world, and in our personal lives, we are seeing the devil at work. There are satanic influences, demonic influences, and the devil at work uh, in this world, in our communities, in our schools, in our lives. The church has been under constant attack. And so when it, those of you who are children of God, Bear in mind, when you see this going on, understand who's at work. But understand there's a greater one at work on our behalf, and that's God. So never let us lose sight that the devil is at work. His demons, his satanic, there is a realm we can't see. And church, we are in a spiritual warfare. We are in a fight. But we must depend and trust on God and Jesus Christ who reigns greater than our enemy, the devil. <clears throat> but now, this saying what I just said speaks volumes to brotherly love, loving one another. Here's why. Because I told you brotherly love is seen in the community, the family of God. And so when we are under satanic attack, now that we know that we are being uh, hit with different demonic forces and different demonic uh, tactics and strategies from the devil, then it is going to be necessary, absolutely necessary, that brotherly love take over. That brotherly love shines 
forth in the community and family of God. Church, when because Satan is going to seek to sway and pull and lure our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ away from God. And so if there isn't any love amongst God's people, then we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be blinded to what the devil is doing. We're not gonna see a, a brother straying and drifting. We're not gonna help one who is in need. So brotherly love, the love of God, seen and shined forth through the fellow Christians, must be apparent. It must be necessary if we're going to overcome and live victorious in spite of what the devil is doing. It has to be necessary. It has to be apparent in our life, church, because we are going to need the love of God and the love of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We must have it. We've got to have it. And we cannot live lives claiming to be children of God, and we do not, we do not extend brotherly love toward each other. Well, come with me to 1 Peter chapter 4. Because what we're going to look at is the, the concept of brotherly love or loving one another. We're going to see that church as uh, being the key ingredient to maintaining fellowship. Now this is going to go in line with what I just said about the devil and his, his strategies and his purpose which is to destroy mankind. It isn't just to, let me be clear, Satan's purpose isn't just to destroy uh, the, uh, the church and to attack the church. Satan's purpose is to destroy mankind. Satan does not want anyone to obey the gospel. He doesn't want anyone to give their life to the Lord. He could care less whether you are in the church or whether you are in the world, Satan wants to destroy everyone. He wants to destroy our young people. He wants to destroy uh, uh, the young adults. He wants to destroy marriages. And let me be clear, he also wants to destroy senior citizens. It doesn't matter how old you are, Satan is under attack. And if he can get to you, no matter what your age is, he will win. He will destroy you at what, at, by any means necessary. Now, Peter is going to help the Christians in chapter 4 understand what is necessary in order to stay constant with God, to stay true to God while under satanic attack. Watch verse 4. Chapter 4, excuse me, verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Peter says, therefore, since Christ has suffered in the flesh, he says, arm yourself. He uses a military term, church, which, which, which speaks of heavy armor, a heavily armored soldier going out to war. This soldier is ready for battle. This soldier is aware. This soldier uh, is sober-minded. He's clear-minded, that is. This soldier is ready to be on the offensive. He ain't defensive, he's on the offensive. And he says, arm yourselves with the same purpose. He says, Jesus suffered in the flesh. Jesus uh, uh, went through the trials, the tri tribulations. He went through the hardships. Uh, he, he went through uh, the, 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 the ridicule and the mockery and, and the beatings and the scourgings because of who he was, who he had claimed to be, who he had claimed to come from. Jesus went through all of that for the benefit of someone else. And watch this. He did it because he loved each and every one of us. So Peter says, arm yourself. I know Nero is out to destroy you. I know there is a Roman emperor who cares nothing about the Lord, about God, and about Christianity. He says, I know you are under attack. As a matter of fact, those who are citizens, he says, in this way where you live, I know you are being attacked on every side 
from people who are ungodly. He says, but arm yourselves like a heavy equipped soldier and be ready to fight. Be on the offensive. Now watch how he explains how they are to fight. Notice, he says, because he, Jesus, who suffered in the flesh, he ceased from sin. And then he says, so as to live the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for the lust of men, but for the will of God. He said, Jesus, armed Jesus, armed himself, was ready, was prepared to suffer for our benefit. He said, but so you also must live the rest of your time in the flesh no longer for the lust of men, but here's why. Here's what, how you arm yourself. You arm yourself with the purpose of living in accordance with the will of God. He says, for the time already passed. Now, I like this because when Peter uses the time has already passed, in the Greek text, he speaks of it being the tense of this verb, already passed, carries the idea of something that is completed and done with. So Peter says, listen, arm yourselves with the purpose of living in the will of God and in harmony with God's will. And here's why. Jesus suffered in the flesh. Jesus did it for us. He says, now you no longer live to the flesh. He says, this past life has been completed and done with. In other words, you've been there and you've done that. And you are not going back to that type of life again. He says, the door has been closed on ungodly living. You are now living under a new purpose, under a new leadership, under a new king who reigns and rules over your life. And so you shall not, you cannot, you will not go back to that life. The doors are closed on ungodly living. Now this necessarily isn't the lesson that are a part of the lesson. Well, it's in the text, but it's not necessarily the points I want to get over to you. But I need to drop this to you in passing. That maybe sometimes we are not as victorious as we should be because we keep opening doors that God has closed. You need to recognize that it is a blessing when God closes the door on your past. Our problem from time to time is that we keep opening the doors of our past and we keep allowing the stuff that cause us to be sinful, that cause us to be ungodly, cause us to be rebellious. We keep opening the doors to the stuff God has closed. I need you to bear in mind that when God shuts the door on your past, when God closes the door of your enemy, when God closes the door of people who are not good for your life, leave that door closed. As a matter of fact, leave the key where you found it. Yeah, but Peter says, for the time has already passed. He says, it's sufficient for you. Yeah, you had ample time to live this way. It's sufficient for you to have carried out the desires of the Gentiles, having pursued a course of sin. Now watch. He said, look at the life you once lived. He says, having pursued a course of sensuality, lust, drunkenness, carousing, drinking parties. And these drinking parties are, are really, uh, they, were, they were like, uh, what sometimes what you see at these frat parties and where these guys are just gulping down drinks and gulping down alcohol and they would have these parties but these parties during the first century these parties were, were, were carried out drinking excessive drinking that would be pay homage to the idol gods he says do not you carry them he says don't go on carrying out such a lifestyle of carousing and drinking parties and abominable, abominable idolatries. He says, in all this, they, those who carry out drunkenness, those who carry out uh, uh, sensuality, lust, those who are running after uh, carousing, those who are part of these drinking parties, he says, understand that they are 
surprised that you do not run with them. When he says run with them, he talks, it carries the idea of running with a pack, or uh, running with a group. You are aligned with a group of people that, that are going in the same direction and doing the same thing. He says, don't think, he says, they are surprised. They think that it is strange. Now when he talks about strange, he is speaking of uh, something that is unusual. He is talking the way Peter uses the word when they think it's strange. He's, he's speaking of them recognizing that your nature has changed. You now take on a divine nature, a divine disposition. And now, because your nature has changed, you no longer live and run with the group you used to run with. You do not, uh, uh, you do not, uh, Contaminate yourself with the same way of thinking, the same way of living, you now have become strange because your nature has changed uh, toward them. Now you do things differently. This is important, church, for brotherly love because now that I'm being attacked, we are being attacked. The Lord's church is being attacked by the devil. You must carry out, you must carry out the same way of thinking. Arm yourself, be sober-minded, be equipped, ready to fight. And the way you do it is by walking in the will of God. The way that you do it, church, is by making sure you don't run with the same path you used to. You do it by keeping the door closed on your path. Then he says, in all this, they are surprised that you do not run with them into the same excess of dissipation, and they malign you. <clears throat> he says, but they will give an account to him who is, is ready to judge the living and the dead. For the gospel has for this purpose been preached even to those who were, who are dead, that though they are judged in the flesh as men, they may live in the spirit according to the will of God. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit. Watch it for the purpose of prayer. So now, one of the other avenues that we're going to be able to fight the devil with is prayer. We're going to close the door on our past. We're going to let God do what he does. He's going to shut us off, usher us into a new life, give us a new nature, and now we're going to start our day with prayer. This is in the community and family of God along with the love of God. He, we, he, he's going to keep pushing it. He says, the end of all things is near. Be of sound judgment, sober spirit, for the purpose of prayer. He says the reason you can't run with the same group, the reason you can't live life the way you used to is because it's going to affect your judgment. It's going to affect your sober-mindedness, your clear-mindedness. As a matter of fact, if you continue to run with this group, and if you continue to live life the way the world lives life, he says that it's going to affect your prayer life. He says, now, above all, now, after all of this, you, you, your, your prayer life is intact, you don't run with the same crowd, God has shut the door on your past, you are living in a, with a new nature, you are living with a new mindset, a new way of thinking, he says, but above all of this, keep fervent. Yeah. Now the word fervent there doesn't necessarily mean passion. Be passionate. Right? What he's talking about, the word fervent there carries the idea of one stretching himself. In other words, you extend yourself toward the one you love. Watch this, church. Uh, or should I say the one who is the object of your love. Watch this. Above all, keep firm. Stretch yourself. Extend yourself in love for one another. Look at that. Stretch yourself. Extend your, keep extending yourself. Keep making yourself available 
they were to come in contact with other Christians, then the Christians who had the means and the ability to help, they did it with hospitality and with a heart of love. And so it met the needs of the saints who did not have. That's love, and it's in the family of God. So you've got, you've got love, which is above all. You've got hospitality. You've got a prayer life that goes on in the community of God. And then you have a certain lifestyle that takes place in the family of God. That is, this, this Christian lives according to the will of God. So it's a different lifestyle. And so they will see that you are of a different nature. Right? You, you are of, uh, you, you are, and you, you know, that, and that think about this, church, because you often hear people say that when they get angry with someone, say, man, you must not know who I am. You must not know what I used to be like, or, or you must not know the life that I live. And they're, and they're warning the person to back off, or they're getting ready to show them who they really are. Well, flip the coin to that, church. Instead of trying to show someone how 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 brutish you can be and how 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 uh, how worldly you can be, why don't you use the same energy by showing people that listen? You must not know who I am. You must not know that the life I live, I now take on a new nature. I'm a different person now. So apparently, you didn't get the memo. I do not live the way I used to live. I will not live the way I used to live. I will not go back to the things that uh, shackled me and kept me bondage and blind to the things of God. I live a new life. And it's all because of the love the Father has for me. So he says, as each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards. In other words, God has placed, when God blesses you with things, when God blesses you with means, you are a steward over that, which means you must now make sure you do, uh, you handle the things of God the way God expects you to. You are a steward, a manager of it. So that doesn't mean you keep, you walk around with closed fists. That's not stewardship. Stewardship says if I have a brother or sister in need, I'm going to meet and steward over the means he's blessed me to have. If the church has a need, I, if I have the means according to the way God has blessed me, I'm going to make sure the church, me, the needs overall are met. That's a different spirit, church. That's a different spirit. But it, it, is, it is one fueled by love. So he says, serve one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Let's look at another one that we talk about. <coughs> uh, let's look at a couple of Old Testament passages and then we'll close with that. Look at Proverbs chapter 10. Look at Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 12. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12 says, hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all transgressions. Didn't Peter just say love covers a multitude of sin? Look, the proverbial writer says hatred stirs up strife. When you have bitterness in your heart, when you see people who are always divisive in the church, they always, then they, they, they have the nerve to put stuff on social media and then you expect people to be a part of the fellowship? Remember, those are souls out there that need saving. So when you are divisive, when you have hatred in your heart, bitterness in your heart, then that person, nine times out of ten, according to the proverbial writer, they stir up strife. He says, but, but, love, church, look at that, covers all transgressions. Look at, look at Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 17. Verse 9 says, he who conceals a transgression seeks love. Wow. He who conceals a 
transgression seeks love. But he who repeats a matter separates intimate friends. Now let's read that again. He who conceals a transgression seeks love. This person is a promoter of love. But the one, the one who repeats a matter, you gossip about somebody's life or what somebody else is going through. When you constantly share other people's business, notice what he said. He says, you separate, you are divisive. You, you separate intimate friends. That is not to be sold in the family of God. Let us make sure we are people of love. Father God, I thank you for your love and your grace and mercy that shines upon us. I thank you, Father, for extending your love through Jesus Christ. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will hear our petitions on behalf of those who are sick, the young baby that's in the hospital, the family, the husband and wife who are sick, Sister Shirley Solomon's relatives who are in the hospital due to COVID and other health issues. Father, we are praying that you will intervene, that you will bless them through your power. Father, we pray for many of our, our saints here who are on our prayer list, and we pray, dear God, that you will heal them, and keep them, and comfort them, Father, in your loving hands. Father, we pray and ask that you will, that you, we will look to you to be the remedy to this COVID virus, the remedy to the ills of this world. Father, we're going to thank you. We're going to glorify your name in spite of it all because you are worthy. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the church that Jesus died for. It's in Christ's name we humbly pray and ask it all. Amen.